the Restore the Republic show here with another gun how-to on, uh, well, how to fully disassemble, strip, and clean an AR-15. This is a Smith & Wesson M&P 15, chambered in the 5.56 with a Churchcon ACOG and, you know, full quad rail, uh, BCG compensator, and, of course, a, uh, <laughs> this is my favorite one. The uh, TLR-1S Streamlight, and uh, it also has the Slide Fire Stock from Slide Fire Solutions. So um, we're going to go ahead and show you now. I don't know if I'm going to do a full disassembly on this. We'll probably take apart the, um, just pop the trigger out and stuff and kind of show you how all that stuff functions and show you how the Slide Fire works and all that. But I mean, there's so many videos online of how to build your own AR and stuff. I don't think I'm going to waste my time with it. But I do want to show you a few features, tips, tricks, hints to uh, make your slide fire run a little faster and how to maintain your firearm after running your slide fire lock. Because a lot of you will notice out there that the slide fire, after a while, it doesn't necessarily go as fast as it can anymore. And uh, I'll explain that to you and more once we start taking apart this gun start with is we'll take off the ACOG. This is the, um, I think this is the, uh, this is the one that's ballistic drop compensated to the 5.56, the TA31R, I believe. It actually has the red tritium element in it. I don't even know if you could, yeah, there you go. You can see that. And it also has the red fiber optic on top. Um, I do want to clean the glass on an ACOG, and I'll show you how to do that. We want to go ahead and pull this kill flash off. There's just a little rubber piece that retains underneath. Um, kind of a pain in the butt to work out of here. We can just leave it hang like that, because as you can see, the scope is really nasty in there. Of course, the back side's really nasty too. Now, I advocate using what's called a lens pen. Um, don't use cloths or anything that will come like that. These lens pens are great. They're cheap. You can get them on Amazon for just a few bucks. And uh, they come with a brush that you can brush dirt and debris out of your scope with. Ah, this thing is really bad. So once you brush all the debris off the scope, brush it out of there too. Come around the backside, just give it a wipe. Now the cool thing about these lens pins is when you pull the cap off, you have the lens cleaner. This lens cleaner is pretty simple. Just come around and wipe it around on there. It has like felt or something on it, man. And this stuff, let me tell you, these things work great. Apply just a little bit of pressure. It'll get all the fingerprints off everything, man. These things are just absolutely amazing. Whoever did this, I'm sure they are very, very rich at this point in time because uh, these are some of the best lens cleaners I have ever seen. Just run it around on there until you don't see anything. Give it another brush. Get a brush on the back side. As you can see, I mean, you can run right through that glass if you weren't paying attention. I mean, it just cleans it up like you wouldn't believe, man. So just take this, reset your kill flash back in there. Just like that. Your scope's clean. Now, I'll probably wipe it off with some WD-40 just to clean it. But So to get your AR apart, there are obviously two axis pins. What I'm going to start by doing is pulling this slide fire out of here. The way we do that is we just pull down on this back piece. It comes right off. This is what it looks like when it doesn't have a slide fire on it. So we'll knock this pin back. Which comes right there. Pull that back. Slide it open. Pull that out. And the way this doesn't come straight back. There's a little indention. down in there that that has to slide out through. 
Now that that's out, let's pop this side of it. Pull it up through. Boom. Now that's separated. One thing I'll tell you, the barrel nut on these, um, depending on this, if you have the old GI style, mil spec style, you're going to have a two-piece handguard that comes off with a uh, delta ring. Um, this one has a uh, full-size quad rail barrel nut on it. They're a little bit more special than those. And any barrel nut you put on an AR-15, I would highly recommend you do not tighten it any more than 53 foot-pounds. 52 foot-pounds, 53. Don't exceed about 54 I've had some on there, man, that just don't come off, that are up at 60, 80 foot-pounds. You don't want it that hard. So use a uh, use a wrench to adjust how tight you want it. And once you get it to about 53, that should knock it right on perfect. Every wrench is going to be a hair different. So once you get it to 53, just slowly tighten it till the gas rod that runs in here or the, uh, the gas tube lines up in the holes that it needs to line up in which that gas tube comes out right here, but that's all black, so you can't really see it right now. So now we got that apart. We'll set that aside, and we'll take a look at the lower. Okay, now we're looking at the lower. Obviously, this has the Magpul bad lever. This has the Rocker Arms two-stage trigger, which is absolutely filthy. And, of course, this is set up for the slide fire, so you're not going to have the pistol grip right here. What we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this and show you how to fully strip the lower. Because um, a lot of people aren't going to have the tools to strip the uppers unless you're building your own AR-15. Then you'll you know spend the money for the wrenches and all that fancy stuff. Um, but it looks like we're going to start with maybe a 5 sixteenths Allen. We'll just go ahead and loosen that. Pull this off very slow. As you saw, there's a spring that just fell out. This is the spring that goes on the safety detent. You can see that detent flopping around in there. Knock it upside down. That's your safety detent. Okay. Pull your safety out. Now, we're going to pull this out as well. So what, what you start with here, if you press it, this is your buffer and then your recoil spring. This is the buffer tube and uh, obviously this is the uh, back plate that retains the detent for this. And uh, <laughs> we're not going to take this uh, buffer tube castle nut off and uh, because I have it set to a certain, and I want to show you a few different wrench types that you can use for those. So there's a few different wrench types out there, and one of them is the more deluxe armor's wrench for AR-15s. This will be the mil spec nut, barrel nut that goes on there. And this is more or less used for um, quad rail platforms that are free floating because their barrel nuts are going to be a little bit different size. And they make all sorts of different wrenches that you can get. These you can pick up. Um, this is a uh, actually military armor's wrench. Um, this one I think you can pick them up for about 30 bucks. These are the cheapies. Um, obviously, they're a little bit different than these because they have this hook on the back. Now, as you notice, there's something missing here because the pin broke off. Um, or I probably cut it off, one of the two. I can't remember. But I don't, I don't really like these for a reason, and I'll show you why. When these go around right here, that pin is used to remove the nuts. The reason I don't like these is because they are rough on castle nuts. They will booger those things up if you're not careful. Um, so I don't advocate using those. What I do advocate using is one of these. It is a buffer tube castle nut wrench. These things are around about $60, $70. They're not cheap. 
but they're worth it. Because when you take this, you slide it over, you got full lockdown on all sides. And it also includes a half inch diameter. Um, Oh gosh, what's this called? A half inch diameter ratchet hole that you can put a um, half inch torque wrench in. And that torque wrench will allow you to actually set this to a certain foot poundage. This is a lot more sturdy and it grabs on a lot better than other wrenches I've seen out there. And I recommend using those. Obviously, I don't own a company that makes these or else I wouldn't be shooting these videos. <laughs> Uh, but these wrenches are excellent to use. Um, I found this thing very valuable, and the customers like it too. If, if you're, you know, you're a gunsmith, whatever, this is going to leave a lot cleaner job, and it's not going to really booger up the work that you're doing. So now that we've covered the different types of wrenches you can have with these, I hope that was informative. Okay, um, now that we've been going over this here. <laughs> This receiver is really, really, really dirty. I haven't, honestly, I haven't cleaned this thing in a very long time. So I'm going to take off the Macpole Bad Lever, which is a battery assistance device, um, BAD. Uh, it just helps you assist by putting your bolt into battery. Um, when the bolt is being held forward after you run out of a mag, you can use this to charge the weapon versus having to do the old slap over here. So we're going to go ahead and take those off. And that way you can have a quick tutorial on how you see it when it, you know, how to install them and everything. Just pops off like that. Actually, yeah. Wow. This thing is really, really dirty. Um, this way it'll allow us access to this access pin for the hammer and the trigger. And we'll go ahead and put that forward. Shouldn't have done that. It's all right. Hammer pops out. Well, what do we have here? This is a little different. You've probably never seen a spring like this before. This is actually a reduced power trigger spring. And uh, if we pull this off, I'll give you a kind of a full view of what this thing looks like. It's a little different from a normal AR trigger spring. It's because this little wing right here there's some precision bends on it, and um, it actually helps reduce the power of it. And this is actually one that I've been up myself. Um, you can buy them from, uh, I think, JT Engineering or something actually makes some like this. I bent this one up myself. But it actually reduces the pull of the trigger down just a little bit. And obviously, the two-stage gives a lot more precision match quality trigger than uh, what you get in a regular AR. I believe the pull on this firearm is down to about two and a half pounds of trigger pull. And um, that really helps speed up the slide fire device uh, when it gets when it gets rolling. It really helps speed it up. Um, a normal AR trigger is anywhere from five to seven pounds, depending on the trigger. Um, so for me, I like a little bit lighter, a little bit crispier, and that's what I get. So that's pretty much how to strip this thing. If you were going to take out this uh, bolt hold open, there's a little cotter pin right there that you got to use a special uh, punch to knock that cotter pin out. And of course, this magazine release comes out. You simply depress this as far as you can, and then you just unscrew it counterclockwise 10 times. And to get it back in, make sure that's depressed all the way with a spring in there, and then screw it clockwise 10 times. 10 times gets it perfect to where the mag stays in, and it doesn't hit any interference like that. But that's the gist of it. Um, usually if you ever take this buffer tube off and you really want to go cleaning, make sure you hold your finger over that because that thing will fly across the room. And then once you take the castle nut off, there is a spring and detent in here uh, that can tend to get bent if you're not careful. So always be sure you're careful on that. I wouldn't recommend taking this one out unless you have the tools to do it, which let's see if we can See that hole right there? That hole, you would use a 
tool like this to depress the detent that's in there. And uh, they're a pain in the butt to say the least. So to save yourself from that thing flying across the room, don't go taking it apart if you don't know what you're doing. But that's how we take it apart. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this puppy up, we'll work on the upper and get that cleaned up and we'll put it all back together. We got her all cleaned up. As you can see, everything's nice and clean now, dried out, ready to go. So what we'll start doing is start reassembling the lower. So this, sorry. So it's gonna go just like this. You slip this up. Let's pry these little wings over the trigger. And it should set just like that. That's why when it's on the floor of the lower, you got spring pressure. The hammer, like this. So that way, when it cocks back, it hits the floor and you have pressure. So first things first, let's go ahead and drop the trigger in. Okay, it's pretty simple. Just put your finger on it, move it, so you can line up the hole. It's like that. Take one of your axis pins, finagle it in. That one should push in with the hand, finger, whatever. Now, if you look at this real close, these pins have detents on them. That's because the hammer spring is gonna sit on one of those detents. Then if you look in the hammer itself, there's a little pin, piece of spring steel that goes through there that hits in that hole. The center of this clicks into that so it retains it. So it's kind of a two-step deal here. So you put the hammer in like this, and you're gonna have to artificially bend it into place. And we'll see how well this works out for me since I'm watching through my camera. All right. Now, somewhere floating around here, I actually have a uh, nylon punch. These things run for about $10, $15 on Brownells. Pretty handy tools. They'll keep from marring up your finishes. Just like that. Right. Now, next step we want is to get the safety in. Put the hammer all the way back, or else you will not get it in the hole, and I'll show you what I mean. Where that trigger sits, do that. Now, when you push this hammer back, it actually disappears. You can slide your safety in there. Before we do that, if you'll notice, there's some black parts around here, some shiny parts. Not too concerned about the shiny parts rusting because they're actually polishing themselves. And when you have polished surface, rust is a lot harder to develop on. But we do have this parkerized area right in here. Um, that's what I'm concerned about. Put a little drop of that PTFE on it. That way in the event that this thing gets dropped in the water or whatever, I am covered. If you ever do drop your gun in the water that's Cerakoted, I highly recommend you clean it immediately. But that's just me. Now, we'll take this, 
Get a little glob of this. Uh, get a little glob of this S350 we like to use from Lubalab. One of the best damn greases I've seen out there. And then any of the excess that's left over. Let's go roll the spring in it. Some people say, oh, you don't need to use grease in them springs. Yeah, well, you know what? The stuff stays there. And it doesn't go away. So it's actually not a bad idea to use grease in your springs. Okay, and the way this would retain, whether you had a pistol grip or just a regular stock, this looks like a pistol grip of an AR. That pin just slides in there, spring, whatever you want to call it. Okay, start tightening that down. Just snug. Don't need to be super tight. Just snug. That's all it needs. Okay. We're starting to come together. Buffer spring. Wipe it off. WD-40 rag. Just wipe it off, man. These things, they get nasty. Some of that powder flies back in them. They don't have to be perfect. Stays pretty dry in there for the most part. So just wipe it off. Run it in like that, all right? Take your buffer, which I believe this is a, some of these will say, this is, a, I think most standards about an H3, and this actually controls in, in uh, burst models and fully automatics, this will actually control how fast or how slow, and, and some guns might need heavier ones. Um, I've noticed this does come into play with slide fire stocks. If you do need to slow it down some, so you're not getting the light primer strikes, you might want to upgrade to an H5 buffer. Um, all there is is there's little weights in here, uh, which you know what? What the hell? We'll pull it apart and give you uh, kind of show you what the inside of a buffer looks like. So before you go pulling your buffers apart, as I talk about it, it has a, a cotter pin or a roll pin in here, and roll pins use special punches. You'll notice a normal punch looks like that. Roll pin punch has a little nub on it. A little nub inserts into this hole. So you can keep it straight and you don't damage the pin. Helps, helps keep them centered too. You know, helps keep them centered. Because um, they can be a little bit of a pain. Uh, with regular punches, sometimes your punches go through them. So what you do is you work this little heavy duty rubber piece off the back and you access your weights and each of these weights have a little rubber buffer in between them well, those are pretty nasty actually um, and these rubbers you know I mean they take a beating so why not while we have it out here we'll go ahead and clean it up that way we got some good functionality in there. Yep, that is the inside of a buffer tube. They come in different, you know, different weights. These are little weights that go in there. You might be able to find some uh, heavier weights, lighter weights. Or if you're, you know, you have a lathe, you can probably make some out of a metal of your choice. Boy, those things are just coming apart. You might have to replace some of the weights in here over time or the rubber buffers that go in between them because, uh, boy, these are just coming apart on me. So, my, you know, and, and again, this is stuff you need to check. And uh, I, I don't think a little piece of rubber is going to be make too much of a difference, but it does help with the uh, operation of the firearm or else they wouldn't put them in there. 
dropping a weight or dropping a rubber piece between each weight. Put that in. Put in a third one. And this obviously hits on that piece of rubber. Just make sure the hole lines up. Then take your pin. You'll see the big benefit of a roll pin punch right now. Because see how it won't come out. It won't it won't allow it to move around. Now some of these roll pins, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on this camera. Some of them have a 45 degree end or a, just kind of an angled end so it's an easier start and if sometimes what you can do just squeeze it just a little bit not too much just a little to help kind of get it started Make sure it's smooth on both sides and there's going to be any dragging in there. Then we just take this buffer, slide it into your spring, pull it back just like that. Now, now we're going to go ahead and reinstall our bad lever from Magpul. I love these things. Very, very great tool. Very high quality product too. Worth every dollar you spend on it. I believe they MSRP around 29 bucks, if I'm not mistaken. And they also come with a, uh, a T9 Torx wrench, which you can use your own or you can use the one that's provided. Um, honestly, I have my own set, but sometimes it's just easier just to use what's on hand. And save these things, man. When you buy these, I got like a mess of Allen wrenches. Uh, that I can give out people that might not have a certain tool or whatever like that. I got a mess of these things laying around the shop. So it's always good to have extra. And uh, if you're a prepper, um, honestly, you can, uh, <laughs> two is one, one is none, right? So there is the lower put back together. Now all we want to do is take the slide fire. We could just slide it back into its position here. Might be easier to do it like this. You pull down on that. Make sure you're lined up. There you are. That locks it in place. And we'll go ahead and set this lower aside. We'll work to on show the you upper. With the bolt carrier group, you have your bolt. You have your bolt carrier. And this entire assembly is called the group because you have a firing pin. Uh, I'm going to show you how to take this part and clean it. But one thing I wanted to show you when testing, whenever you pull this out, always do a little check. And we'll come over here into the light. We literally just set it down on its weight. So if it does that, that means your gas rings are good. Now, if it just falls on its own like that, that means you need to replace your gas rings. And uh, honestly, the gas rings are decent in this. They do need replacement. Um, they're, they're getting there. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and replace them now uh, to get it out of the way. But uh, slide fire stocks are really hard on gas rings. But yes, it should freestand just like that. If it does that without moving down, that means you need to replace your gas rings. So as long as it stays up, you're good to go. So to take this part, there's a little cotter pin right here. Snag that out. Firing pin should come out. Twist this. This is normally sitting like this. This is the bolt cam pin. So that's what holds it in. To get it out, you must turn it. Pull it out. There you are. Your bolt's taken apart. Now comes the fun process of cleaning all this crap up. So we'll get that cleaned. Also, 
to take out your extractor, push that pin out. There you go. There's a little spring right here. Some of them are just a spring. Some of them have a little plastic bushing with O-ring in them. Just depends on your platform. There you are. Here comes the gas rings. I want to make sure that you don't have a lineup like this. Um, obviously, that lets excessive gas bleed through. Uh, but as I said, we were going to actually change these. So what we're going to do is show you how to change three-piece gas rings. Um, you know, personally, I've used the McFarlane's before in this firearm and they work all right but i just found that the three piecers they do just as good so what you do is you just walk these things off you gotta force it over the edge and just walk it around kind of like a keychain Get all three of them off, and usually, once you have them off, shoot a little 40 on them, get your cleaning brush, look at all that nasty crap coming out of there. And you thought you cleaned your bowl. That's pretty nasty. Get it real good. Wipe off the excess. And grab a set of new rings and install your new ones. It's pretty nasty. So Brownells part number zero seven eight zero 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 nine nine nine. Open them up here. Gosh, make them childproof. Finagle them out of the bag. They'll ever come out of the bag. Jeez, Brownells. It's ridiculous. Good night. Pays to have a razor blade, I guess. So, here are your new gas rings. Simply slide them over. No certain direction they should go. If anybody's told you, I've heard people say, oh, you got to put them on a certain direction. That's BS. It's a really weird line of thinking to ever say that. But, anyways. Continuing. So, see how that one, those little spaces line up. Let's go 180 or even maybe a 50, 45, 50 degree from it. You got to get it around there and just walk it on. You have a split right there. Split right there. And then we're probably going to put one right here. This way... They all can circle, you know, and move around. They have the freedom to move around on there, but they will not line up to allow gas to come through and escape. And if you have a lineup that close, what we can do is scoot them around. Just grab a pick. Sorry, smaller pick. That's what we want to see. Keep them spaced out. Don't let them get close together. Probably push that one over further. Just like that, man. That's all it takes. Then we could take this piece. Rubber goes down. Little plastic thing sitting up. Put this back in your position here. Take the extractor. There's a little hole in the extractor where that spring goes. Just lay it over the top. Push it down with your finger. Hold it in place. Take this extractor axis pin. 
run it through the hole. All it takes is finger pressure. It's really not that bad. And what holds this in place is just being inside the bolt itself. The bolt will keep it from walking around anywhere. That's working. Now, this is actually your ejector, this pin right here. And I wouldn't recommend taking that out, man. You could probably squirt some crap in there, but that's how it works. It'll kick the shell out to the right side of the gun, or if you have a stag left hand, it'll kick it out to the left side of the gun. Okay. So now we got that done. We want to run a, just a quick swab in here. A swab. Pretty clean for the most part. That's all we want to see. Cleanliness. Okay. Then we just take this in. Now, the way this bolt goes in, if you have a right-handed model, it goes into the carrier with the extractor to the right side. If you have a left-handed model, it would go in the carrier to the left side. If you try to put it into the left side, Try to take your cam pin and fit it in there. It's not going to work because it's tapered. And then it will really get ugly when you try to eject around. So make sure it sits in there to the right. Should look just like that. Okay. Drop your cam pin in. And one thing I want to show you what to inspect too is your cam pins. You hear how that's kind of clicking on my nail? Well, that's because a little bit of metal comes off every time you shoot this. Well, it, it kind of beats it up, compacts it in. Sometimes these get real bad. And uh, after a while, if they start getting real bad, which, you know, a little piece right here, a little smooth piece right there, or even a little nub, that's fine. But if they start getting really worn out, just drop them in and replace them. These things are like three bucks. They're really cheap. Um, it's probably not a bad idea to have some on hand, have some spare parts. Um, I have on average two spare car, well, four spare parts kits on hand, you know, and you can get an upper parts kit for 20 bucks and then maybe a lower for 30 if you look in the right places. So once you get this cam pin in, it slides in like this. Make sure you don't leave it like that. Make sure you turn it around and lock it in place. That way we can get the firing pin through because that cam pin has a hole in it. It goes all the way through there. And if we keep that cam pin turned, notice how you can't see through it anymore because it has a hole in it. See? Take your firing pin. Push it in place and take your little cotter pin. Just twist her around till you get her to force through that hole. I mean, don't force it, but you know what I'm saying. There you go. Now, we'll give it the bolt check. It's standing. You can see, before I just got cut off there, that really takes pressure to push down now because those gas rings are brand new. Okay. Now, we'll move on to the lower. Or, sorry, so, the upper. Um, Show you how to clean the chamber. Now, the only brush I will use in a gun is a chamber brush for an AR-15. Um, get some WD-40 on it. Load it up. Load up the chamber. Load it all up real good. Come in with a drill. That's it. Wipe it out real good. Um, this way you get a nice cleaner chamber. It busts everything up in there and uh, cleans it out real well. So I just wanted to show you that. So now we're all just about done here. 
Just gonna get it all back together. Do a function check. Gun's been cleaned, board's been swiped. Um, first, we need to start taking your charging handle, and you'll notice Yeah, you might not be able to see it, but there's a little slot in here right there. Because if you try to do it anywhere else, it's not going to go in. you got to push it through the slot. Leave it hanging out about that far. Not pushed in, but with your bolt in the forward position all the way extended. Slide it right there. There you go. That's it. That's all it takes. Now, take your lower, pop your pins, just like that. Move this camera back just a hair so y'all can see. First one we're gonna get in first is this one. Push that all the way in. Bring it down. Boom. It's in place. Now, I do want to wipe my optic. Little WD. These are, uh, Trigicons are not cheap. I do try to take really good care of this puppy. They're great optics though. I love these things. You know, I just, we had the other AR out. It has an EATEC on it. And uh, <laughs> went to go try to use it. And luckily I have these backup sights on the other one too. Just like these with the Trigicon uh, night sights in them. And we were able to use it because the EOTech battery went dead. Trench cons, you ain't got to worry about battery. So, uh, you know, they use that piece of tritium and it glows. Now, this, uh, I have this uh, ARMS QD mount for this uh, AR or this Trench con. And uh, they're real nice because they hold zero perfectly. Once you get them set, they're set. You just got to make sure you get them on the same place. That they were on on the rail. I used the very last one back here. That should be remembered. And then you just pop those in. Boom. You're all optic secure. That's how we do it. That's your uh, AR fully cleaned. Now we just got to do a function check. Now that the AR is clean. We just want to do a function check. We pull our bolt back. Number one. Let's make sure it's unloaded. Keep your mag out. Get your finger up in there. You can't get your finger in, just personally inspect it and make sure there's not a round in. So, like I said with this bad letter, normally on the military styles to charge your weapon, you'd have to do the slap right there. What's nice about the bad lever is you can use a one-fingered operation off of this side. If your bolt's held back into position and you have to put your bolt forward, boom, that's it. It seems that this thing's walking off of there. That's fine. I'll fix it in a moment. But uh, these are pretty decent guns. Um, Magpul makes some great stuff for them. And, uh, well, to get to the function check, we got to put our bolt forward like this. Squeeze the trigger one time. Now, do not release it. Come back. Charge the weapon. Then you want to hear a click when you release this. Hear that click. That's what we want to hear. So, for more videos like this and others on gun how-tos, go to RestoreTheRepublicShow.com. Go to our on-air section. And uh, in there, you will find a video section of uh, that specific page. Not the video archive, but the video section. And on there, you'll find more how-to vi uh, videos, special reports, and others. Of course, always tune in Saturday nights, uh, 11 p.m. till 1 a.m. Eastern Time for the Restore the Republic show on Liberty News Radio. Or if you're out in Memphis, you can listen on your AM dial at 1600 AM. Uh, that is WMQM out there in Memphis. Um, 
Thanks for watching. If you found this video informative, as always, please share with your friends and family. And uh, I want to empower you so you know how to work on your own guns. It's going to be a very valuable skill in years to come. God bless America. We'll see you next time on Gun How-Tos. I'm your host, Kevin Blake of Restore the Republic Show.